Welcome, Welcome to, to the Top, top Show of the Year! year. Same, 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 but, but different. different! Good evening everyone, I'm Christine and this is Yang. We are your hosts for today, Same, Same, But Different! Jeez, what's up with your dressing in? I'm hyped up for the celebration of our talk show broadcasting live now in Sydney! Woohoo! Say hi to our fellow Sydney siders! Oh great, hello Sydney! Mmm, please don't get freaked out by dressing in Switch channel! We're same same but different. Each week we feature interesting topics voted by the communities and we bring in the experts here in our talk show to talk to you about it. We've got Simon Cowell up here last week talking about idols and stars, Jamie Oliver the previous talking about food and gourmet, so we basically talk about anything from lifestyle, food, music, work, school, anything. You voted, we got it. So let's check out a poll from last week. Interpreting. Hmm. This seems to be an interesting topic. What's that? What about we ask our Diti Guru? <coughs> Interpreting is where one translates orally the words of another person speaking a different language. The communities have the tendency of thinking that both interpreting and translating are the same, but they are different. An interpreter is not the same as translator. An interpreter are in charge of interpreting spoken communication. Translator work with written documents. There are two types of interpreting, simultaneous and consecutive. In simultaneous interpreting, the interpreters are housed in a soundproof booth with a direct feed from the speaker's microphone. They wear headphones to prevent their own voice from interfering with their comprehension. They process what they hear and speak into the microphone in the booth with a time lag of approximately one phrase. And since interpreters are only human, Speech notes and slides must be provided to them ahead of time in order to secure high-quality performance. In simultaneous interpreting, speakers are also cautioned to speak at normal speed. If you're a fast talker, slow down, please, with many breathing pauses. Please remember that interpreters can only do their job only after they hear. You need to give them a chance to catch up from time to time, emphasize proper nouns and numbers by either slowing down or repeating. In consecutive interpreting, the speaker pauses from time to time to allow the interpreter to speak. A sentence is the minimum unit, and the most effective is paragraph by paragraph. The speaker does not have to talk slowly, as normal speak is better for comprehension. The important thing is not to speak for too long before pausing. Interpreters can only retain so much if they are to render it accurately. So I recommend consecutive interpreting if accuracy is of paramount importance. Thank you, Dikti Guru. Now we get a better idea of what interpreting is. They are simultaneous and consecutive. Indeed, same, same, but different. Now let's invite our expert on this, our first guest speaker for today, Jin Yong Lee. Woohoo! Jin Yong Lee was born in Seoul, Korea. She has lived in North America, Europe, North Africa, Middle East, Southeast Asia, and Australia. She received her master's degree in conference interpretation from Hanguk University of Foreign Studies. She's also a member of AIIC, home of conference interpreters worldwide. Since 2006, she has also trained interpretation students for past 15 years at Hanguk University, Monterey Institute of International Studies, and EY Women's University. Jin has organized interpretation services for numerous conferences, including the Seoul G20 Summit, and provides cross-cultural communication, training, and consulting to Korean public and private organizations. What a talent! Hi everyone, 안녕하세요. I'm Jin Young Lee. Thank you, Jin, to take time off your busy schedule to come to be part of our show. Now, Sydney Siders, what are you guys waiting for? Call into our hotline and ask the expert your question. Hi, I just want to ask if there are any difference between 
English and Chinese interpretation and is the pictorial nature of Chinese actually Chinese character I meant provides um advantage to Chinese interpreters. So Jin, what do you think? The most noted difference between Chinese and English is between topic comment structure and subject predicate structure. Chinese sentences do not require a grammatical subject if it can be inferred from the context. The interpreter must go beyond the words to make sense of the comments and express it in a subject predicate structure. Secondly, since Chinese characters which are actually words, not letters, are monosyllabic, a Chinese sentence can be spoken relatively faster than an English one. Therefore, when interpreting from Chinese into English, brief summarizes are often required. These two features of Chinese alone make it necessary for the interpreter to process message very carefully and not to rely just on words. This indicates Selakovich's theory. In addition, because Chinese verbs do not carry markers, tense, person, or number, and Chinese makes no distinction between definite and indefinite articles, the interpreter must add this when re rendering a Chinese sentence into English. Furthermore, nominalization is a common Chinese feature that requires some effort in interpretation. Finally, the interpreter must adapt to the difference in modifiers between the two languages because English is generally considered right-branching while Chinese is left-branching. The long wait that this implies during interpretation creates memory burden on the interpreter. According to Joel's effort model, the advantage of easy and accurate comprehension of the source text by the Chinese interpreter is thus offset by attention paid to these specific features in English. To my knowledge, no research has yet been done on the advantage for interpretation of the pictorial nature of Chinese characters. An informal survey was done a while ago about Chinese interpreters' experiences and it fails to confirm such an advantage. First, not all Chinese characters are pictorial in nature. Second, since interpretation deals with message in its entire instead of separate words, visualization of words may not help comprehension or retention of the message. Thank you, Jean. I guess that pretty much answers the question. That's good to know. What about we have the second caller now? Hi, I, I have a problem of interpreting English into Chinese because my first language is Chinese and what should I do? An interpreter whose first language is Chinese usually needs to pay more attention to and tends to make more mistakes in the comprehension of English than that of Chinese. The tendency to do a literal word-for-word -word interpretation appears more frequently, especially for beginners and with speeches of high information density. And so, the result is often an unnatural Chinese interpretation. This is natural, you are not alone. A case in point is the abandoned use of passive voice, which is normally used only with a negative preposition in Chinese, compound complex sentences. Though not very common in speeches, can be a headache once they appear in interpretation. Nevertheless, the topic comment structure or topic prominent feature of Chinese provides a convenient solution. The flexibility of placing comments in several possible preposition, I mean positions in a sentence without having to follow a rigid subject predicate structure allows an interpreter to interpret small segments of the English speech immediately and then link them up together in a sensible logical manner based on the comprehension of the comments. Thus, the interpreter doesn't have to make an effort to store sentence segments in short-term memory while reorganizing them into a new sentence. Professor Bao Chuan Wen gave this example in a recent paper. The interpreter can begin with any of the four segments of the following sentence without changing the meaning of the sentence or affecting the comprehension of it. San Diego is the last destination during my trip to California and I look forward to the opportunity to talk with you. 
This flexibility of the topic comment structure of Chinese is particularly helpful in dealing with complicated structure in simultaneous interpretation, reducing stress, and enhancing performance. What a beautiful advice! Thank you, Jean. Well, because Jean has a really tight schedule and she has to leave, nonetheless, thank you, Jean, for coming to our show. All the best to your career. No worries. Thank you, everyone. No worries, guys. We have our second guest speaker from today, Jean Pierre Alain. Jean Pierre Alain was born in Paraguay of English mother and French father. He has lived in South America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. He graduated as a conference interpreter from University of Geneva in 1970s and obtained a master's in economics from the same university in the same year. Member of AIIC since 1971, he has worked as a conference interpreter since then and was a lecturer at the Interpreter School, University of Geneva. He has also been an advisor and economist with several NGOs in Africa and Asia since 1970s. In addition to interpreting, he has organized conferences and teams of interpreters for several years. Bonjour, je suis Jean Pierre. It's certainly an honor to be here. Thank you, Pierre, for coming to our show. Sydney Siders, ringing now. Hi, I would like to ask, what is the most frightening change that you have encountered ever since you started your interpreting career? When I started out, that's almost back in the early 70s, delegates actually made an effort to be understood by other delegates and of course, by the interpreters. This actually seems to be have been lost and except in negotiations. Interpretations is necessary part of international meetings, but at many conferences, particularly scientific ones, delegates seem to be unaware of the fact that they are being interpreted. Few of them attempt to communicate ideas, most simply try to read through their text as quickly as possible, often in barely intelligible English. This is excavated by the demands of organizers who crap too much in a conference program and ask that all presentations be made in English in a mistaken belief that everyone understands English. So the task of interpreters as communicators has therefore become more and more difficult. And it's always easy to criticize but hard to do, you know? Oh man, poor thing, huh? But I guess you get to go to nice places attending conferences in hotels with all those nice ballrooms, events. So fun. I always dreamed about it. Oh god, you won't want to know where we work. You know, the, the interesting fact is that most congresses and other meetings like in Asia Pacific are held in hotel Forums and probably other multi-purpose rooms which do not have built-in interpretation booths, yeah? So therefore, interpreters actually work in this kind of mobile booths. Have you seen this kind of mobile toilets or things like that? Yeah, so we basically work in such places and it's really bad. I think Dictiguru has something to say. This is the mobile booth. A recent scientific study on work-related stress among interpreters found that the most common complaint they had about mobile booths is that they did not have enough fresh air. The amount of air in a booth depends on the size and on the ventilation. These and other characteristics of mobile booths are prescribed by ISO standard number 4043. Do you want to work there now? Oh my god. I'll stick to my hosting job. <laughs> 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 Alright, let's have our next caller on the line. Hi, I would like to ask 
In what areas do you feel that interpreters and translators have been most affected by recent technological advancements? Mm, regarding recent technological advancement, I wouldn't say really recent, but the internet certainly is our biggest savior. So interpreters today have make extensive use of what is provided in the internet to prepare for our conferences. So organizers today, nowadays, don't send us documents. They instead they indicate a website where we can't find the detailed information regarding conferences. And another thing is that translation memory and machine translation tool. It certainly facilitated our written translation work. For example, they identify same words or phrases in the text and instantly provide the corresponding translation. How good is that? But of course, the human element is nevertheless always needed to ensure that technology has produced what the author intended. So for these qualified, trained, and knowledgeable translation translators are essential. Only human being actually understands that language is the expression of thoughts and feelings, not a string of words with an exact equivalent in another language. Any written translation meant for publication must be checked by a human translator. So machines couldn't really replace our human brains because they don't think this is even true for the case of interpretation. There is no software program yet that is able to distinguish between different ways the same words may be pronounced in different contexts or according to the intonation use between what and what, for instance. So, Computerized interpretation is also difficult to achieve because of the widespread use of English. This is beautiful language is mispronounced so badly by many non-native and even native speakers at conferences that it's impossible to create like a database that can fathom the different ways in which words are pronounced or the way punctuation is actually used. So, as interpreter, we have to recognize words for words, but machines can. For example, when you say ship, as in the boat, ship, and they can actually interpret it as ship, the ship. So, or when we say cement, it sounds like semen, but you see, so machines actually don't think. So, I think that internet is certainly helpful for us. The machine's translations are in a way not too helpful in some cases. Yeah. Technology is your savior. Well, not the sheep and semen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Jane, what is the technology that you think will make the life of interpreter easier? Life easier? Well, I guess a technology that automatically sends written statements that are to be read by the speaker at conference well in advance, that will certainly make our life easier. That sounds awesome! Yeah, definitely. So, can you tell us, what is your vision of the future for interpreting profession for our Sydney siders? Well, my vision for the future is to have uh, more conferences held exclusively in English, or should I say it in what passes as English. And so there will be less need for interpreters with formerly dominant world language like French, Spanish, German. And so there will be more need for interpreters with less frequently used language like Indonesian, Vietnamese, Chinese, Thai, Cantonese probably and other East European languages. So in all cases, English will still be needed as the connection between languages. Yep. Ah, that sounds awesome. Thank you, Chin, for taking your time off today to come down to our show. Cheers to your future and all the best to your career. My pleasure. Thank you. 
Alright, Sydney Siders, we have come to the end of our show. We hope you have enjoyed our session today with two of our fabulous guest speakers. And same, same, but different. We'll see you next week. Same, same channel, same time, time different, different topic. topic. Ciao!